here, and welcome back to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today we're going to continue reading the exciting, magical story of the Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. Oh, be sure to subscribe. Let's continue on with story number six, The Lap Woman and the Fin Woman. They stopped at a small house. A wretched place it was. The roof reached down to the ground and the door was so low <laughs> that the family had to crawl on their stomachs so they wanted to get in or out. There was nobody at home but an old lap woman who stood roasting fish at an oil lamp and the reindeer told her Gerda's story but first his own story for he considered that was much more important. And Gerda was so exhausted with the cold that she couldn't even speak. Dear me, you poor dear creature, said the lap woman. You've got a long way to run yet. You must travel more than 400 miles into Finnmark. For there it is that the Snow Queen has her country house and it burns blue lights every blessed night. I'll write a word or two on a dry cod, for I haven't any paper, and give it to you to take to the thin woman that's up there. She can tell you more than I can. So, as soon as Gerda had got warm, and it had something to eat and drink, the lap woman wrote a few words on a split cod, and told Gerda, to take great care of it. And then she tied her fast onto the reindeer again and off he bounded. The noise went in the sky and all night the loveliest blue northern lights burned there. And then they got to Fenmark and knocked at the Fen woman's chimney for she hadn't a door. There was such a heat inside that the thin woman herself <laughs> went almost naked. She was a stout and very thickly made woman, and she made haste to undo little Gerda's clothes and take off her mittens and boots. Otherwise, she would have been too hot. She laid a piece of ice onto the reindeer's head and then read what was written on the codfish. Hmm. Three times over she read it, and then knew it backwards. And she put the fish into the cooking pot, for it might just as well be eaten, and she never wasted anything. Then the reindeer told first his own story, and then little Gerda's. And the thin woman blinked her wise eyes, but said not a word. You are so clever, said the reindeer. I know you can bind all the winds of the world in a single thread. And when the skipper looses the first knot, he gets a good wind. And if he looses the second, it blows strong. And if he looses the third and the fourth, there's a storm that blows the forest down. Won't you give the little girl a drink so she can get the strength of 12 men and get the better of the Snow Queen. <laughs> Strength of twelve men, said the thin woman. That would be just the thing to be sure. She went over to a shelf and took out a large rolled up skin, which she unrolled. Strange letters were written on it, and the thin woman read in it till the water trickled down her brow. But the reindeer pleaded again so hard for little Gerda. And Gerda gazed at the thin woman with such beseeching eyes full of tears that she began to blink her own eyes again and drew the reindeer apart into a corner where she whispered to him. At the same time, laying fresh ice on his head. Little Kay is with the Snow Queen. Sure enough, 
and finds everything after his own wish. And though he believes that it is the best place in the world, but that comes of his having a splinter of glass in his heart and a little grain of glass in his eye. They must come out or he will never become human again and the Snow Queen will keep her power over him. But can't you give Gerda something to take so that she can get the better of it all? <laughs> I can give her no greater power than she has already. Don't you see how great it is? How men and beasts alike are bound to serve her? And how she's made her way so wonderfully in the world on her bare feet. She must not learn of her power from us. It lies in her heart. It lies in her being a dear, innocent child. If she cannot win through to the Snow Queen and rid little Kay of the glass, <laughs> we cannot be of any help. Ten miles from here begins the Snow Queen's garden, and you can carry the little girl as far as that. Put her down by the large bush that stands there in the snow with the red berries on it. Don't make a long jabber of it, and make haste back. Then the Fen Woman lifted little Gerda up on the reindeer, and he ran off as fast as he could. Oh, I haven't got my boots! I haven't got my mittens! cried little Gerda. She noticed it at once in the scorching cold. But the reindeer dared not stop, and he ran till he came to the large bush with the red berries. And then he put little Gerda down, kissed her on the mouth, and large limpid tears ran down over the beast's cheeks. Then he ran back off again as hard as he could. There stood poor Gerda, shoeless, without gloves, in the middle of fearful, ice-cold thin. She ran on as quick as she could, and then, there appeared a whole regiment of snowflakes. They had not fallen from the sky, for that was quite clear and shining with the northern lights. These snowflakes ran along the ground, and the nearer they came, the larger they grew. Gerda remembered how big and wonderfully wrought they had looked at that time when she looked at some snowflakes through the magnifying glass. But here, they were quite of another sort and size and dreadfulness. They were alive. They were the Snow Queen's sentinels. They were of the strangest shapes. Some looked like great, ugly hedgehogs. Others like knots of snakes sticking their heads out. And others again like fat little bears with bristling hair. All of them were glittering white, and all were living snowflakes. Then little Gerda began to say the Lord's Prayer, and so fierce was the cold that she could see her own breath coming out of her mouth like a cloud of smoke. Thicker and thicker it grew, and shaped itself into little bright angels who grew larger and larger when they touched the ground. And they all had helmets on their heads and spears and shields in their hands and more and more of them came on. By the time Gerda had finished saying her prayer, there was a whole legion of them about her. They struck at the ugly snowflakes with their spears and broke them into hundreds of fists and little Gerda went safely and boldly onwards. The angels chafed her hands and her feet, and she felt the cold less, and on she went quickly towards the Snow Queen's palace. But now, we must see how little Kay's getting on. He certainly wasn't thinking about little Gerda, and least of all, that she was just outside the palace. <laughs> and that's the end of this chapter. Join us for the next 
video and the final story in the story of the Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. <laughs> and until next time, as always, happy story time. Bye.